How to create organic shapes using sculpting and self-cut. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show how to create this pumpkin design. Um, this is not interactive tutorial because the interactive tutorials does not support the sculpting feature. So I'll already review a video of the design process. And this actually starts very similar to the box modeling, the goldfish box modeling tutorial I've just done. And it starts with basically creating a sphere, same, same idea. And if you remember from the uh, goldfish tutorial that I've done, uh, the main concept when doing box modeling is you are creating first a basic primitive shape and then you're dealing with uh, selecting segments, adding segments, and modifying um, the segments, uh, ex extruding them, inset, any tool to create them. Um, this starts with the same way, but actually uses a little bit different tools that we didn't have a chance to use in that tutorial. Here it actually works more with edges. Instead of building out additional segments using extrusion, um, it's going to use extrusion also, but it starts first by modifying, selecting the existing segment. So the way it's done it, it loop selects the edges, and then uses a chamfer. A chamfer is, is something that adds it. If you add it at a corner, it will actually kind of chamfer, like bevel the edge. But if you add it like in the center, in the middle of an object, it will just kind of split the edge into two and adding a tiny face. So instead of using the add the details tool or the other techniques, inset, other techniques we used in the previous tutorial, um, here it uses another option, depending obviously in design what requires. Here this option was much better. So we added these segments and then we select all the other segments except from these added segments and we're extruding them. And once we extrude them, basically we start building the basic shape. So this is still considered technically like box modeling. Um, and this is actually the way you do it sculpting in SelfKit where you first build out the shape. In some software you require to do everything in sculpting. Um, in SelfKit you can actually start with building the basic shape, a low poly shape. You can see now we're just scaling it and we're creating the basic shape. Now we're gonna create the top and extrude them and add a little more details. So we kind of create the silhouette, the basic concept of the shape. And then sculpting is going to be used just to add the fine details. And as with the goldfish tutorial, we're going to use now uh, transformations and together with extrusion and, and so on to basically um, finalize the shape, the basic shape. Now you can actually create in SelfKit um, a shape from start, kind of like drawing the shape and doing it, but it's much you'll have much better um, outcome and, and lower poly and better performance if you do it um, in this way first create a basic shape so and it's obviously much much faster so now we are basically done with the uh, main shape and as you can see over here we have a total of just 352 vertices this is really low poly and it's already starting to look like the basic idea now the thing is i explained actually in, in the goldfish tutorial as well the concept the difference between box modeling and uh, sculpting is that in box modeling you expect to have um, really low poly and you're working just with the polygons you have if you needed to have more details you can add details like either using the add the details tool we used before or the way we did it now chamfer or uh, cube selection or any other tool plane cutting the many other ways inset um, any other way to add additional faces as needed um, when it comes to sculpting actually the idea is you add enough details that you have enough to start sculpting so it can give you a better visual performance high resolution model but it's not ideal for things where performance matters like modeling for games and so on and so forth. So in order to add the details now and start actually making it look more smoother, we're gonna start first by using the round object tool, which is besides making it look more nice, it will also add details. And as you can see, we already have 21,000 faces, which is quite a lot. And now when we enter sculpting, it asks you always if you wanna add details because that's what's needed, but we said no because we already added. So we had 21,000 faces. Um, so now all it's left is to make it look kind of organic and kind of add the fine details. So now we're going to activate, you can play with the brushes, whatever it works, and the intensity. And it's also adding a symmetry. Symmetry is used a lot for these things because it's just visuals. And one of the tricks that designers usually do is, um, you know, people don't really realize the fine details, like comparing segments to segments, if they have the exact same details or not. So often you can kind of work around and use um, symmetry or other techniques to repeat the same details on different segments and it's not really noticeable. Um, so you can just get around it and save time. It's, that's basically the only thing what it is, it's just saving time. Um, obviously if you want it to be more 
perfect and add different details to each thing, you wouldn't do that, but in most cases people wouldn't realize. So you're just using now the basic brush to kind of add details and then use other brushes to clean up. And this is an artistic view, to be honest, I'm not an expert in this. Um, it's just, um, you need to get a feel of these brushes, what each one is doing. I do have actually another video where I explain it a little bit more in detail, um, how these sculpting are working, but you can just see it visually what it's doing and it's kind of basically an artistic tool. And um, yeah, as you can see, you get a feel of what these brushes are doing. Um, but now, once we have enough details, now the concept here is that sometimes you need to add more details um, because you kind of stretch the tiny faces, but this is not overly moving it and the amount of faces we have, it's doing it. If you do need to move it more, there's a, a tool which is not visible over here, which is dynamically adding more vertices. It's, it's kind of hidden now, it's below where you see the tooltip video, so you can't really see it, you have to scroll down. Uh, but there are options to extend more geometry. If you would like start from a basic cylinder and need to build out everything, you would need to add more details. But because we used first the box modeling techniques and already built a basic shape, um, adding the fine details when we have added so many faces, 21,000 faces, is good enough. Um, and using this technique actually ends up at, at the end actually being much lower resolution is still good versus if you would have started everything just directly in sculpting because sculpting doesn't have the luxury of adding details just where you need it if you need to add details you need to add a lot of details all over and that's basically it um so now yeah you start get already start seeing it it's not really that fine detail but it's it's kind of starting to look more organic um not really fine and now we're going to use a smooth brush or you can kind of smooth out these things we have added. And um, again, the same thing is just playing with symmetry and this type of stuff. Not much to explain here, it's just visuals. And again, there's no added faces, everything's working. There's one thing you have to understand what sculpting is also doing is um, it's automatically fusing faces. It solves the problem with um, some problem with non-manifold, not always. A lot. If you overdo it, you then have to run the magic fix um and within the after exiting your tool or this there is a remesh option in the tool itself again these features are hidden over here um yeah now it turns off symmetry and adding a little more detail um, but this is basically it what you do over here you can see you can start adding details and depending on the brushes they all allow you different um, type of tools uh, different type of effects and now you can see it's going to um, pinch brush or, or crease brush it's just a way of crease can kind of add like tiny um, um, small uh, incisions like yeah, creases as the name is I guess crease but although this has positive and negative you can see we switch between the positive and negative to give it um, in and out so it's kind of like really engraving it's a your tool set that you can really start cutting in and out and this is basically all it's doing is it's moving vertices. That's basically it. It's actually not working on the faces. It works directly on the vertices. And this only works because you have enough details. So as I said, you don't have the luxury to add details just where you need it. Um, there is actually a dynamic feature that will add vertices or faces just in the section where you need it. Um, yes, it is an option like that. Uh, but for the most part, usually it's used just by um, adding the entire geometry and then simply moving them, making sure you have enough details. And um, yeah, that's basically it. It's It can give you a lot more um, fine details and type of shapes like this it needs to look really perfect. This will be difficult in box modeling to really make it look like this. So this is exactly what sculpting is made for. Um, but yeah, you can use it combined, start with one tool and then finish the other tool. And um, that's basically it. As you can see, now it starts adding like the really creases on the knee to cut out pieces. So, and it's making each one individually, which kind of makes it look organic. And now it's using another brush and um, I'll speed it up a little bit the video so we can go quicker and just see the same idea. And as you can see, you can freely just 
switching between brushes and keep on doing it until you get the desired look. Okay, so now we have the move tool, which is interesting. This is kind of like drawing. Uh, this is what where you need usually the dynamic um, option to, if you start stretching it too much, um, you wouldn't have enough faces because these faces are being stretched. So if you would go further and start stretching a lot, this is where you can need to have either remesh to add more details to the entire thing or turn on the dynamic option, which again, it's hidden and, and it's gonna start allowing you to automatically populate more faces. Um, but now this is just adding, you see, the same idea we used before, just with a much smaller size, allows you to add smaller things. So and one thing is interesting when it comes to size, these sizes are also, it's not absolute size. It's not like where you're doing the technical modeling tools and basic and, and scale, all this type of stuff, real sizes. This size, the size of the brush, which is actually, it's a smaller brush, but it's also based on the camera. So if you would zoom in and out, will also affect the size. So you don't always need to change the size. And if you zoom in, the size actually gets smaller or bigger, depending on the zoom of the camera. So this is basically what you get over here. And again, this is something that you just have to get the feel of it, play with it a few times until you see what works. But it's actually a standard technique in, in most sculpting where the applications, where the camera is, is also playing an effect. So it's related to the camera. Actually, an older version of SolidKit was not like that, but um, people coming from other applications expected to work the same way, so it was changed to do the same thing, which is based on uh, camera, actually. Camera adjusts the size as well. And um, that's basically it. So now we just left to color it. And as you can see, this is done. Starting box modeling ended with sculpting, and it's perfectly done. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you want me to show anything else. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.